order. Could I please have a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting? Supervisor Simpson, seconded by Supervisor McDevitt. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. At this point, I would like to, um, it, would it be okay if we just jumped the agenda for a moment and um, invited President Duffy to give her update? She's uh, here with us today and before we have a motion to go into executive session. Okay, great. President Duffy, would you like to provide a report so, for the college? Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I've commandeered your technology here. Um, so thank you for giving me a few moments. I just thought I'd give you an update on your investment in the construction projects that are in full swing. Give you a little bit of a pictorial tour of where we are, where we started, and where we are as of yesterday even. And then I'll talk a little bit about our budget process and where the state um, is sitting at this point. So. So here we go. So here's, this is, um, as you can see, quite a while ago um, in the fall after we broke ground, we pulled up a lot of boulders, so uh, it was very noisy, but we're making progress here. This is about a week or so later. You can still see the old greenhouse on the side of the science building. Um, see, I can see all this right out my window, so this is what I spend my day now, looking at construction and mesmerized at how this all in unfolds and happens. So as you can see, we've got some we got some walls up as the snow started to come. The winter weather has been um, a friend of ours so far, so we've been able to move light right along. And this was as of this week. We actually have steel. And um, if you recall, the timeline was you know we're working on the addition to the science building now, and that we would break ground for the workforce readiness center, which is on the other end of the building in March. We're actually the uh, not we <laughs> meaning me, but the. Uh, the contractor was able to start earlier on the Workforce Readiness Center, so we've already broke ground on that project. So we're still um, ahead of schedule and on budget, which is always music to our ears, and this is as of yesterday. So um, things are moving along nicely. Um, no disruptive on campus, as construction projects are, but students and faculty and staff have been very amenable, and, and if you've been on campus, parking can be a little bit of a challenge, so I beg your indulgence if you do have to come to campus to uh, stick with us and, and we'll continue to make progress. I just want to give you an update on the state budget. So um, SUNY and on behalf of the community colleges made a request to the state to just what we call hold harmless, which is really kind of a K-12 strategy of saying, look, just don't cut us. Same amount you gave us last year, um, give it to us this year, um, considering that community college enrollment has been um, really returning to pre-recession levels that if you gave us the same amount of money would still help us to be able to meet our operating costs. Um, and then we also did ask for some funding to try to continue to invest in, in um, best practices for student success initiatives. Um, so we didn't get that. Um, in fact, we got a cut from the executive budget, so we're obviously concerned. So about a 5% cut from last year would be would translate into a 5% cut in about $21 million less for community colleges than we received this year. So obviously we're concerned, and um, the community college presidents are meeting next week to kind of regroup and continue our advocacy with the legislature. Now it's not unusual for the governor to not have anything in his budget for community colleges. He particularly likes to relegate that opportunity to the legislators. So this isn't necessarily new, but of course we were disappointed um, given our primary role in helping more students in our community succeed. So. Um, if, if this holds, we would lose about $200,000 out of our budget, which although it doesn't sound like a huge amount for a budget our size, every little bit counts, and so we would be concerned about that. So we may be asking you to help us as we continue our advocacy in um, working with the legislature to ensure that community colleges are given the funding that they need to um, meet the needs of our community. So. Um, more to come on that. Hopefully by the end of next week or so, I might be able to send you some talking points that even when you're interacting with our local legislators, it would be great if you could um, help us in, in making our case, and we'll continue to do that on campus. So that's really what I had for you today. I just wanted to keep you updated on where we are with construction, and um, of course uh, our budget process is right now, and we'll continue to work through and, and monitor what's happening at the Level, but I'm happy to answer any questions or comments. Yeah, I just, when is completion or of, the, of the building? Would you get so it? the science addition will be done this summer, so that we can move everyone out of the current science building while we renovate that space next year. Um, the workforce readiness center is scheduled to be open by January of 18, so everything will be done by summer of next year. Believe it or not. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you, President Duffer. We appreciate you taking the time. And if you, when you do have that information um, regarding the advocacy, the legislation, please send it over and we'll, we'll pass it to the board for yeah, a resolution. Thank you. <coughs> At this time, I, I'd like to see if there's a motion on the floor to enter into executive session. I'm told our attorney, Popovich, would like to provide us with an update on collective bargaining negotiations. Motion made by Supervisor Brock, seconded by Supervisor Fraser. All those in favor? Aye. Carried. A vote. A vote. Could I please have? Um, there's. Do I put the motion on the floor? Yep. Can <laughs> oh. I please have a resolution? Um, a motion made for the resolution to move the terms of the settlement with CSEA discussion that we had in executive session to the full board. The motion is made by Supervisor Vanslow, seconded by Supervisor Frazier. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next on our agenda, we have an update from our 2017 health plan from Andrew Flynn. Are they here? Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, hi. Mr. Stewart, the floor is yours if you would like to provide an update uh, regarding our 2017 health plan. Good morning. Okay, so what's coming around, the purpose of today really, and actually there's some of you who, who may not be familiar with us, I'll just make a quick introduction. My name is Matt Schuett and I'm with Jager and Flynn Associates. We handle the health prescription and dental plan and um, HRA for the county. This is Kurt Jager, our executive vice president. And uh, the purpose of today really is to kind of set the tone, set the agenda for the two, what we're going to talk about in 2017. I know you have a fairly full agenda today. Uh, so it's primarily to, to give you a quick snapshot of what's happening in the world of healthcare, what's happening with your particular plan, and, you know, cost drivers that we're concerned about, and then really, again, going into the areas that we're going to dig into in 2017 that affect your health plan. So, um, and I want to leave a few minutes for questions too, so I'm just going to buzz through this. Uh, the number one, as far as your health plan performance, so discussion of what's impacted claim costs. Um, last year, and this did not affect the county, but it's important to know that um, last year your Blue Shield portion of your health plan, your, your the claim portion that you paid, considered the minimum premium, there was actually a, a deficit under that particular portion of it. Uh, now, the good news is Blue Shield ate that. That is not something that the county is responsible for under your current contract. If you fall in, you can only gain from a surplus. You don't have to pay for a health plan deficit, though. And um, so you had about a $452,000 deficit of your health plan in 2015-16 um, plan year. But again, putting that on the radar screen for you as things we have to discuss going into this year, Blue Shield absorbed that. So you did not have to pay that, but it does go into factors for when we come up for renewing your health plan. So what's driving some of that cost? Is it, it particularly as it relates to 2016 and 17, it's, um, you have a couple things. We have, and I won't get into detail about, you know, obviously we never expose who it is and we don't even know who it is, um, but just to give you stats on particular cost and what's driving cost, you have a few, you ha we have 10 members and I just kind of break it out a little bit. Ten members that have have claims, and that's going to, when I say claims, large claims, that could be anything from cancer to heart to, um, you know, you name it. There's a number of different areas, items that can, that's going to influence claims and premiums. We have eight claimants that are between, last year, between $100,000 and $200,000 of utilization. And then there were two that were between two hundred and two fifty. dollars or two over 250, I should say. 
So these are things, and some of them are going to continue into the new year and some aren't, or into the 2017 year. So these are areas that uh, Kurt and I are looking very closely at. Uh, we can't do terribly too much to influence the high cost claimants that are there now, but discussions about what we can do to work with wellness programs um, for employees in the future to try to head some of this off down <coughs> the road. Also prescriptions. Uh, we've taking a little bit of a look at your prescription use. You may hear and recognize in the news uh, and see it yourself. The cost of prescriptions is astronomical. And there you have a number, just like, just like any bu business of your size, public or private, you have a um, number of prescriptions that are in the five to $6,000 per month variety. That, unfortunately, is hitting all aspects of uh, our economy, uh, in our healthcare economy, large companies, small companies, it doesn't matter. So, but this is an area that um, we are going to be discussing specifically in 2017 to address how to cover them a little bit differently maybe so that the county is not at risk for those types of costs or even higher costs than that. So and number three, this is where, I won't go into this in tremendous detail, I want to leave a little bit of time for questions, but this, is, this part will be the agenda that we'll be laying out and reviewing in our meetings. Um, we have been dedicated at this point to have a little bit more time in the March, June, August, and September meetings to really take an opportunity to drill down and discuss these items that are, not, that are listed here. Um, letter A, discuss changes to the Affordable Care Act and how those impacts, um, how that impacts the county. Well, obviously, we don't know what that's going to look like yet, but uh, we, we, we're fairly confident there's going to be change and there's something that we're going to have to talk about with uh, the committee and the Board of Supervisors when the time is right and how that's going to impact from a cost perspective, compliance perspective. Um, as soon as we know what that's going to start to shape out like and look like, we will deliver that. Also, we're reviewing the components of your current minimum premium plan. You have a, your current health plan has a couple different areas in it that are important to know about the moving parts. We're going to dig in on that, on that section. Also, reviewing a prescription utilization and the risk, um, the risk of, of not having any reinsurance on your prescription plan currently. Um, at the present time, the county is paying it for all prescriptions regardless of cost, and we want to discuss methods to have a backdrop on that, have reinsurance or stop loss where you have a little bit of additional protection for high cost prescriptions because for the ones that I listed that are five and six thousand dollars, we've seen, you know, they're yeah, $55,000 prescription, believe it or not, injections. These are considered specialty medications, and uh, it's, it's alarming where these costs are going, and it's driving, as I mentioned, all forms of health care costs. So we want to talk about uh, how to protect the county a little bit better over time against those um, spikes. And, of course, review of year-to-date claims, utilization, and projections. F is reviewing cost control methods. We're going to dig in deep on you know, what, it, what are areas that you can affect your claims, what are areas that we can um, maintain a high quality or equal plan design and affect some change on the cost side of it, what we'll be, be looking at. So whether you stay where you are in the current arrangement or you go to self-funded um, self funded insurance model. Um, the the G is also review of Employee Navigator. Employee Navigator is an electronic enrollment system, a benefit administration, benefit admin system commonly referred to. And uh, just wanted to give everybody the heads up. We are we've been talking about it in previous um, committee meetings. We're real close to being able to roll that out. Training should be happening in uh, February. And we're looking for departmental rollouts probably sometime in early March. So that's going to come and I feel bring some real efficiencies to processing. It's going to be starting to slowly, um, I don't want to say eliminate entirely, but reduce paper, reduce the burden on paper, which uh, by default will save on some soft costs. And also um, transitioning the wellness program. We're going to have deeper discussions on how to tie together a wellness program to really start over time to incentivize, to influence um, health, the health of individuals, which uh, over time can therefore, if you're a self-insured plan, that can influence your claims over time. 
So something we'll be digging into. And uh, the I is um, implementation of a telemedicine program. Blue Shield is launching a telemedicine program sometime in the third quarter, they tell us. And a telemedicine program, for those of you that aren't terribly familiar with it, is for, um, say, routine type care. Care that's, uh, you know, run-of-the-mill type things, ear infections as an example, things like that. You can receive your care versus having to um, schedule a doctor's visit, drive to the doctor's office, have a wait, you know, pay your copay. You can actually visit, quote-unquote, visit your doctor on your tablet, on your phone, on uh, through the yeah, through the telephone. Yeah, so it's, uh, there's a, it's a growing trend. It's something we, we're going to talk about uh, deeper with the committee to see if it's worth how you want to roll it out, if you want to take advantage of it, if, if you don't. But it's, uh, it's, a, it's a newer trend, and it's a way to save time and it's a way to save some money because these tele-visits save are actually a lower claim cost in the background. Okay, So just a, a unique way to think about it. And then um, we've kicked around the discussion about voluntary benefits. We'll dig deeper at these particular committee meetings. Um, you can structure it in ways that you can split it and offer it to um, union or non-union. A very variety of ways we're going to look at that. So I, I apologize if I went through that a little bit quick. I am trying to stay conscious of your time, but I will um, certainly take some questions for I at this point regarding either the plan or you know the past or anything of that nature that relates to healthcare. Thank you, Matt. Are there any questions from the committee? Yes, agreed. It's, uh, we've had, we have a fair amount of experience with it over the years, and uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve, you know, uh, to, be, to be fair up front for employees and everybody to get used to it, but there's great advantages down the road, absolutely. Um, you know, everything's out front. People, em employees can see it. Spouses can view it at any time throughout the year. It's not just an open enrollment tool. It's a year-round benefit administrating tool. Uh, for employees, and it'll save it'll save the uh, the county as well over time. So uh, we're very excited about it, and we're right on the cusp of training on it. Well, Matt, we want to thank you for your hard work on this, and certainly look forward to providing these benefits for our employees as well, and in hearing from you in the coming months. Thank, thank you for you. taking your time. Moving on, at this point, we'll turn the meeting over to our human resource director, Jackie. Is there anything you want to? particularly address regarding the report of tracking of vacancies filled? Um, no, no. Okay. Great. Um, at this point, we have a request to amend our resolution number 87 of 2015 to correct the budget code designated for the purpose of paying EAP services. Is there a motion on the floor to move that forward? Motion made by Supervisor McDavid, seconded by Supervisor Fraser. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion is carried. Moving on, a request for funding in the amount of $2,100 to pay the monthly administration fee associated with our health reimbursement account. Is there a motion on the floor to move that forward? Second. Supervisor Brock, seconded by Supervisor Fraser. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Moving on to item number D, a request to amend resolution number 536 of 2016 to amend Appendix B to update the department head performance evaluation <coughs> form. Motion made by Supervisor McDevitt, seconded by Supervisor Brock. Is there, I totally forgot discussion and I apologize. I appreciate um, that yeah. discussion. Any discussion? No, they'll chime in. Okay, good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, just as a side note on this, I do want to thank everyone. You have all received your performance goals uh, working with your department heads. Uh, 
if you haven't already got your finalized department goals over to Jackie, please do so today or tomorrow. And uh, we'll look forward to our mid-year reviews in April. I think we still need to vote on that. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion is carried. A request for funding to replace five Novatime clocks and increase the annual software support due to the equipment failure. Motion made by Supervisor Fraser, seconded by Supervisor Brock. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries. There's a request from the personnel officer to amend the table of organization and salary schedule to reduce the salary of the civil service tech one from 45000 to 42000 That motion is made by Supervisor Simpson, seconded by Supervisor McDevitt. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. There's a referral from Social Services to authorize enrollment in a job-related course for Jessica Mesita, Social Welfare Examiner, to enroll in Policing and Society at SUNY Plattsburgh. This begins on January 23rd. The cost is $573.05. If this is re approved, she will get reimbursement of 50% of the course cost upon completion of the grade C or better. Is there a motion on the floor to bring up? Supervisor Vanslow, seconded by Supervisor Brock. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Referral from GPW to request an authorized enrollment in a job-related course to enroll for, um, I'm going to mispronounce your name. Maybe. Maya, just say Maya. Maya, okay. Maya Scraggins. Thank you. Uh -huh. To enroll in the Fundamentals of interme Intermediate Accounting at SUNY Adirondack. Uh, the course goes from January to May of 2017 to the amount of $756.35. Again, 50% of course cost upon completion of the C or better. Mr. Vanslow, made a motion to bring it to the floor, seconded by Supervisor McDevitt. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. A request to amend the table of organization and salary schedule to create the new position of highway management number one with a salary of $71,904 for training purposes. The highway manager number two position will be deleted once the person filling that position retires. The motion to put that on the floor. Made by Supervisor Brock, seconded by Supervisor McDevitt. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carrying. Referral from Information Technology and Support Services to request and amend the table of organization and salary schedule with the position of Computer Help Desk Technician 2. Annual salary is 50,000 50, as well as authorization to fill the same. I'll move it. Motion made by Supervisor, or Supervisor Garrity, seconded by Supervisor Brock. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Request to amend the table of organization and salary schedule to create the position of temporary computer help desk technician with a salary of $20 per hour, as well as authorization to fill the same. Moved by Chair, uh, Supervisor Garrity, seconded by Supervisor Vanslow. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Just a quick observation. I, I was over there yesterday for some training. Uh, first time I had been in Mike's uh, setup over there. Boy, what a what a great setup. Okay, it uh, it uh, it looks like it's uh, raring to go. And then the uh, it uh, you just wonder if uh, if uh, our current employees, in terms of the ability to maybe get some additional help as far as computer applications. Uh, Efficiencies, uh, does that happen periodically? Or does yeah, it was until we get new or new classes once in a while. Yeah. Um, that's perfect. This class that we're at, the yeah. yeah. That's one thing we've got to talk about, Peter, because we're, we're shy on yeah. bodies over there, and we're shy at the church Department also, and yeah, we, I, we've got to stay competitive. Yeah, uh, Bill Mahart uh, helped me yesterday. Right. He did a, just a great job. Set yep. me up, so that's great. Now that, yeah. Thanks. Just for clarification purposes, are there any opposed? That motion carries. There's a request by the county administrator to request and amend the, sal amend the salary schedule to increase the salary of our security officers and commissionary co clerk from 1741 to 1776 per hour to clarify the 2% salary increase for part-time security officers and the clerk, which was approved in the 2017 budget. And a motion to put that on the floor by Supervisor Brock, seconded by Supervisor Garrity. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. The second is to amend the salary schedule to increase the salary of the voting system support specialist from $17.50 an hour to $19.50. Again, to clarify the salary increase for part-time voting specialists, which was approved and adopted in our 2017 budget. Supervisor Frazier made the motion to put on the floor, second by Supervisor Vianslow. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Motion from personnel, a proposed resolution number 146 of 2016 um, uh, concerning salary adjustments for the deputy department head that is a pending item. Yeah, Excuse we can, we got to, we'll put that to bed next, before next month. We need to have. So we'll come back with an update. Yeah, we need to. So that will remain in our pending item. Yeah, we we got to take care of that. And we'll come back with a report then next month. Higher education did not have any items. Is there any new business or any additional pending items you'd like to discuss? I think that's it. May I have a motion to adjourn? Made by Supervisor Fraser, seconded by Supervisor Simpson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.